every country, every person seems to have you know, their own sort of brand, they have a value. And if you look at you know brands who collect the culture, it's pretty much the same. You make, most celebrities have their own persona. According to, uh, according to a Marx, you know, the perspective that brand has a certain value. Or when you know a celebrity is glamorized, their brand goes up. Expressions of their art, activism, they go up as well. They have an inflated value. When they're scandalized, their art, their activism also goes down in value. Expressions and substitutes of the persona are creations of the artist such as artwork and activism that hold brand value. And like I said, from a Marxist perspective, exchange value can go up or go down. So that's why it's important to consider the persona and its brand. Now, let's take a look at the persona in celebrity culture. Now, if I asked you, um, what does a celebrity mean? How would you define a celebrity? What would you say? What is a celebrity? What's a celebrity? Someone that's well known for some. Yes, that's a very good answer. And uh, Daniel Gorston would say, you know, these days celebrities are well known for well knownness. They may or may not have talent. It's not really a requirement all the time. So that's a very good answer. Uh, somebody who's well known, somebody who's famous. Any other idea? So before I go any further, I have to ask you, do you like celebrities? This is an important question. Do you like celebrities or do you hate celebrities? No? You don't like celebrities? Some of them, yes. Some of them, yes. <laughs> some of them, okay. So whether you like celebrities or you don't like celebrities, I'm pretty sure you're going to get something out of today's lecture. Celebrities such as her have helped with political lobbying, raising public awareness, and generating funds for social causes. And they influence appreciating their artworks, especially if they engage in social, political, and personal change. But some critics, some researchers, such as uh, Dan Brockington, would argue that celebrity endorsements support publicity, profit, and corporate capitalism. So they're not really sure how far celebrity activism is effective. Now, I do see a certain positive sides, but I do you know, understand what they're saying. And when celebrities do get scandalized for their own immoral actions, and according to Darwin's institutions, um, their activism, the, you know, the value of their activism can be deflated instead of being inflated. So how do we, how do we manage that? What do we do about it? You do see a role that the persona is playing here. The key question is how do we still value the good done by celebrity activists while acknowledging the irony of personas, celebrities, and activism? Can traditional media and mobile communication make a difference? We're coming to an end of this particular presentation. We're going to look at some directions that have been addressed in celebrity studies. Scholars can act as journalists and interview celebrities, as well as other personalities, using biographical elements as <coughs> historical tools and contribute research and informed opinions in media. What happens in art and activism a lot of times is that the context in which they are done, they are removed. That's what happens when art, activism, they get commodified. The context are removed, the subtleties, the nuances, they are removed. And that's why our affective bond with them also gets disconnected. So we need to restore that. And I think I think it's a fabulous idea for many academics to consider integrating celebrities and other public personas. So maybe we can put some attention towards celebrities and other public personas instead of you know looking at how fans consume celebrities. And in the past, if you're aware, uh, cultural studies thought about fans as cultural dupes, you know, passive, and um, you know they don't really have say. Now fans are considered to be active audiences, especially the shows. I think they have a lot of agency. But um, celebrities have been also considered to be you know, powerless elites, and we need to consider their voice as well. Scholars 
only interviews with celebrities can be extended to media interviews with academic personas to restore indexable connections, symbolic connections, and affective value lost in tabloid media. And this is an example of a uh, board member, uh, Anita Klein, who went on to uh, CTV National News in Canada and uh, recently just left. We actually, the Center for Media Studies was also in Canada's national um, number one magazine, Shepherd Magazine, and Swim Magazine. And so uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to always you know, offer important opinions in media for us and um, to connect with the readers and the viewers. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you.